Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Kaiubi gives Naruto a special Sharingan Naruto Loves Yujito, part 1, subscribe if you enjoy the video, and also check the description, so let's begin the story. Nine-year-old Naruto was walking down to the academy on a relatively sunny day in the ninja village of Konoha. A slight breeze was blowing, and the scent of grass and freshly baked cinnamon rolls were in the air. As the young blonde was walking to the academy the villagers spotted him just like they always did, but instead of leaving him alone, they started to form a mob. The death glares they sent towards the blonde made him extremely nervous. Great looks like I might have to run to the academy. As Naruto started to think of a way to get to the academy safely one of the villagers threw a rock at him and hit him in the head, causing blood to start to pour down from the injury. That him? Kill the demon. Why don't you guys just leave me alone yelled Naruto as he started to run, I never did anything to you. Shut up, demon, you will not plague us anymore. As Naruto was running for his life he missed a group of the villagers steep out in front of him, and they caught him off guard. Now we will finish what Yandame started, you demon scum. As they started to beat him Naruto continued to ask himself why he deserved to be beaten like this. They all stopped when they noticed several walking out. The villagers began to back off when the four ninja walked up to the downed blonde. Please stop son please I didn't do anything to you why are you doing this job? So demons can cry said one of them dot. The villagers all realized that the ninja were on their side and continued to attack the blonde boy. Once the villagers were through beating the young blonde he was left a bloody broken mess on the ground. Before Naruto lost consciousness he noticed that several of the ones who beat him were ninjas of the village. So much for them to protect and serve the people of the village. Hey I have an idea let's take him to one of the training grounds and tie him up and leave him for the wild animals. The a chorus of yous ranged throughout the streets. As they dragged him to the training grounds and tied the young blonde up they started to disperse and continue their day. What they didn't realize was that after they had given the boy one of the worst beatings of his life, the very demon that they feared had finally woken up. So those pathetic humans have started to beat the boy even more fearing my powers over him. What stupid mortals they all are. Sai the Kaiubi waited till they all had left the area before taking control over Naruto's unconscious body. I can't leave the boy here, the dumb men of the village will continue to beat him and try to kill him. Once the Kaiubi freed the young blonde he started a set of hand seals. The monic teleportation technique can need a little help with the translations. As the gate opened up in front of the fox Naruto the young blonde stepped through. Time skip. It was several hours before the young blonde woke up in a place he did not know. The area was a very beautiful place and quite peaceful. There was a small pond, a large lush forest that stretched as far as the eye can see and a very large mansion. Where am I? Looks like you are finally awake. Who said that show yourself yelled Naruto trying to sound braver than he was at the moment. It would be easier if you came to me to hang on. WWH what do you mean? Naruto was never able to finish his question as he was pulled inside of his head in front of a very large cage. Mindscape. Where am I now? Asked Naruto very fearfully. You are in your mind kit and I am Kyubi no Kitsune. So what the villagers said about me was true. I am a demon. Said Naruto. Even though he tried to hide it, the sorrow was still evident in his voice. No. You are not a demon, a monster or anything else that those dumb villagers call you. You were just the unlucky one to have me sealed inside of you. Why are you being so nice to me? Ugh, even to use demon kits and young ones are valuable, we love children even if we are extremely violent. Oh hawk that makes sense. Okay good now I have a proposal for you. I am going to train you and turn you into a great shinobi. Um okay that seems great and all but what's the catch? You are not as dumb as you seem. I want you to rip the seal in half. What? No way I may be 9, but even I know that if I do that you will be set free. God damn it kid just listen to me for one second and hear me out. Dot. After seeing the look in the young boy's eyes the fox felt guilty. Why the hell do I feel like this? Whatever, I just need to get this boy stronger and get him to rip the seal in half. I'm sorry. Let me show you my human form, maybe that will make you more comfortable. After the fox had said that his body started to shrink and change. Once he was done changing there was no longer a giant menacing looking fox, but a man that was 6 foot 2, with long black hair and red streaks running through it. His eyes were still the same chrism red with a black slit in the center, and his canines still looked like fangs. He was wearing long black khaki pants that stopped above his ankles right on top of what looked like red combat boots. His upper body consisted of a fishnet shirt and a red and black muscle shirt. On his hip and back were three swords. One standard katana and behind him on his hip were dual kadachi. And to top it all off was a solid black trench coat with a nine tails fox on the back. Now that I am in this form do you feel more comfortable talking to me? The blonde could only stare wide-eyed at the man in front of him. Um yeah I can talk to you now. Good now as I was saying I want you to rip the seal in half. Seeing the blonde was about to interrupt Kaiubi held up his hand. Let me finish. 
when you rip the seal in half I will be able to train you properly, and I will still be sealed inside of you also I am going to give you a gift if you become strong enough. The gift. What a gift. Come on come on tell me tell me. The haha first it will be training for me second is the summoning contract for the foxes, and third is the biggest one is the sharingan. Wait why would you train me? Give me a summoning contract, and I thought you had to be an Achiha to get the sharingan. Don't read too much into this kid. I don't really like you or care for you. But with you being my container and being weak it makes me look weak. The summoning contract is so you can summon me into the real world to help you, which is why you need to rip the seal in half. The Sharingan like all bloodlines was given to you humans by demons, and the Sharingan is mine. So all of this is to help you and not me. Exactly kid now do we have a deal or what? Oh sure why not? But now rip the seal in half, and these are the hand seals for the summoning dot. As the young blonde ripped the seal in half and watched the Kaiubi perform the seal several times he was sent from his mind back to the physical world. Pinoha, back in the village hidden in the leaves the third was not in the best of moods. What do you mean you can't find Naruto? We are sorry Hokage-sama, his chakra signature is nowhere in the village. I'm alright and believe now. Hi Hokage-sama, Naruto where are you my boy and please be safe. Unknown area. Alright so I just draw a little blood and perform these hand seals and then summon Dot. I am impressed you were able to summon me on your first go. Now I have been around for 3000 years. ANDK the actual age of the Kaiubi. So I have seen a lot and I know a lot. I will be teaching you to Jutsu and Ninjutsu. I won't be teaching you because quite frankly I suck at it. Cool. So what are you going to teach me first ha 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 what is it? Calm down. Oh I bet it's really cool and deadly. I said shut up already now, then first I'm going to teach you shadow clones. It creates solid clones of yourself. That's so lame why would I want to learn something like that anyway? Because kid you can get say 5 years of training with 500 clones, if trained constantly for a year with this amount, but we are going to start off with say 25. How do they do that though if there are just clones wouldn't the physical stuff have to be done by yourself? Hmm and here I thought he was just another dumb blonde. Yes the physical you must do yourself, but if it deals with tojutsu, ninjutsu or kinjutsu, then your clones can do it also chakra exercises can be done by the clones as well. After the Kaiubi was finished explaining the uses of the clones, Naruto was very much impressed with the usefulness of the technique. Hanoha, Saratobi Hiruzen was searching furiously through his crystal ball for one Naruto Uzumaki. Not finding the young blonde anywhere he finally gives up his search for the one like a grandson to him. God damn it. Anbu get yourself in here now. Hi Hokage-sama. Asked the fearful leader of the ten Anbu agents kneeling in front of the age. I want Naruto found right now. No more excuses no more dumb son of bitches hating him for the fox. Do you understand me? H hi Hokage-sama. All of the Anbu feared for their lives due to the fact they have never seen their kind and gentle this furious. You have exactly two days to at least find the slightest trace of the young boy or the things I will do to you will make Ibiki, Itachi and Arachimaru cringe at the ruthlessness of it. Now get thee out of my sight and find him goddammit. All ten Anbu vanished without a single word uttered, and a few even pissed their pants from the Hokage's words. Man I have never been so scared in my life. Who knew they cared for the boy that much said the commander of the group. Hey Wolf where do you think he could be? I don't know, I don't know, but for our sake I hope to every god out there that we find the boy or who knows we might be dining with the devil in two days. Unknown area. Alright kid seeing as you have the clo. Hey Fox, where are we? You never told me. Just as Naruto interrupted him a vein popped in his head. You know you little shit I don't like being interrupted. But because you don't know we are at my house high in the mountains of fire country, and no one can find us due to a chakra hiding barrier around the place. Okay so where exactly are we? God damn the kid just shut the up and get back to work. As Naruto walked off snickering the Kaiubi was still standing there mumbling words that would have made the foulest mouthed sailor red from the words. As Naruto's laughter increased it became audible to the Kaiubi. Oh I am so going to kill that little shit and then bring him back to life and kill him again and yes that sounds like fun. Now to go and make his life a living hell. Hey Kaiubi I think I should send a message to Hokage Jiji so he doesn't worry about me. Alright just send a messenger fox to him and tell him what's going on just not where we are. Hanoha, as Iratobi was sitting behind his desk he heard a very peculiar sound behind him. When he turned around to the source of the sound he saw a small orange fox sitting on his window seal. I'm a fox it must be a summon. But who has the fox contract? As he opened the window and let the little fox into the room, he noticed more of the finer details. One it was more red than the standard orange, and two it was slightly bigger than the foxes around, which just ensured that it was a summoning. So who summoned you here because I don't know if anyone has the fox contract. You are as smart as Naruto-sama said you would be. Naruto summoned you? Um, yes he did he sent me here with a message for you. He told me to inform you that the Kaiubi no Kitsune is training him due to the villagers ignorance towards the boy and that he will be back to finish the academy, but his skills will be that of a higher low jounin. 
Morite but inform the Kaiubi that if he hurts Naruto I will kill him and send him to the Shinigami stomach myself. After he said those words the fox disappeared and went back to the ones who summoned him. Naruto you better come back okay or I swear I will kill the damn fox myself. Kaiubi's house. When the young summon returned and informed Kaiubi of what the old man said, he told him to return and focused all of his attention on Naruto and his training once more. Time skip. It has been six months since Naruto started his training with the Kaiubi, and his skills have grown exponentially. He was quickly approaching the skills of a Jounin faster than what he was supposed to. Hmm he shouldn't be at this skill level yet hey Naruto, come here real quick. You what is it I have to get back to training. First tell me, have you been doing extra training without my permission? Yes I wanted to get stronger than I was. Well it appears that we will be returning sooner than I said, due to your inability to listen. Now last question how many clones did you use when you were training? The look on Naruto's face told the Kaiubi that he was not going to be happy. I used 600 clones. You used how many clones? Yu Yuhe I used 6. Don't lie to me you little shit if I ever catch you using that many clones I will kick you all over the 5 Natuians. After the Kaiubi's blow up he started mumbling to himself over Naruto's recent actions. Well seeing as how your recent actions we will have to leave now. But we haven't been out here for a full year. No we haven't, but since you have used 600 clones we will be leaving early, and plus you are a year older cause your birthday was last week. As Kaiubi's words hit Naruto he realized that his birthday was indeed last week, and that when he goes back to the academy, he will see all of his friends again, and all of his precise people. I wonder how much has changed. How like it really matters the villagers will still be the same, and so will most of the people at the academy. I really don't want to go back, but I have to so I might as well deal with it. Now go and get ready for the trip because we won't be coming back here for a while. As Naruto was getting ready the Kaiubi started the hand seals for the teleportation jutsu back to Konoha. Demonic teleportation jutsu. Time skip. After a few hours of walking through the forest of the Fire Nation, Naruto could finally see the gates of Konoha in the distance. Stupid fox why couldn't you put us inside the walls? Shut up kid it was as close as I could put us without beginning attacked. As Naruto continued his argument with the fox he failed to notice that he was at the front gate of the village, where two chunin were on guard duty. Halt and state your business in this village. He realized that it was Kamizuki and Izumo too troublemaking chunin who had one hell of a sense of humor. I'm heard guys you should at least recognize the prank king of Konoha that made you guys look like amateurs. Well well Naruto it has been a while and you look different. And true to their statement Naruto's normal orange jumpsuit was no more. Instead he wore a dark blue mesh shirt with a crimson red fox wrapping around his waist and up his arm to his neck, with blood red khaki pants and black ninja sandals. Yeah I decided it was time to change my look, so this is how it turned out. Well where have you been man we haven't seen you in almost a year. I'll tell you later right now I have to go see the Hokage and get reinstated into the academy and get my apartment set up again. Alright man go on through and we will catch up later on today. After they let him go through Naruto went to see the Hokage and start up in the village all over again. Naruto had a new journey ahead of him, and there was no telling how hard it will be. As Naruto was walking towards the Hokage's tower he was seeing all of the new stores and shops. Once the blonde realized where he was headed during his thoughts of how the village had changed yet stayed the same he found himself outside one of his favorite places. Well, well I haven't been here in a while. I guess it won't hurt if I stopped for a quick bite to eat. I thought you were over that damn obsession with Raymond. Nope just because you wouldn't let me have any doesn't mean I am going to stop eating it. Hey old man 10 bowls of Mizo Raymond please. Who the hell is yelling out here as the owner of the stand spotted Naruto he had a huge grin spread across his face. Well boy it's about damn time you came back here. As he inhaled the smell of the Raymond and then quickly consumed the delicious food he started to talk with the old man before two Anbu appeared by him and interrupted him. Naruto-san the Hokage requests your presence. Alright, alright I'll go and see him once I am done eating. The Hokage is not to be kept waiting. One of the Anbu had said that he placed his hand on Naruto's shoulder. Anbu san I would suggest that you remove your hand from my shoulder before I remove it, for you. The icy tone that Naruto used made the Anbu take a second thought before reigning in his emotions. Do not threaten use boy we are Anbu for a reason now, move a dot faster than even the Anbu could track he was behind the one that had placed his hand on Naruto's shoulder, and then bent his arm all the way down breaking his arm at the elbow. He brought his fist back to deliver a powerful right hook, but was stopped by a woman. Said woman was wearing a very short skirt with fishnet underneath and a large tan trench coat. Hey shorty shit how about you head to the tower and don't wait any more than you have. Don't call me short you stupid bitch. But you are short. Shut the up fox nobody asked you. Even faster than Naruto was able to move or follow, she was behind him with a kunai held to his throat. For the first time in a long time Naruto felt fear of the women behind him. Well now let's get going seeing as how you're not moving. But that said she and Naruto shunshin to the Hokage's tower. When they arrived he was facing his most feared paperwork. 
Hey Gigi, it's been a while. Ah uh, Naruto-kun it certainly has been a while. So how have you been and I hope that Anko-san wasn't too rough with you. I have been good and no she wasn't too rough she could have been rougher, but oh well at least there was no wipes or handcuffs. As they were talking neither Mail noticed Anko pull out a pair of handcuffs or the wipe out of her pocket somehow. Oh Naruto come here please I want to try something with you. As she was twirling the wipe and handcuffs approaching him swaying her hips and leaving nothing for imagination. She gave him a wicked smile that said she was going to enjoy torturing him. As he watched this he knew that Anko was just messing with Naruto, but he was curious as to how he would deal with it. He was surprised when the boy had yet to move and was even more surprised when he let Anko wrap her arms around him. As soon as she had her face in front of his he leaned in and hugged her. Normally she would have killed any man that did that to her, but the way he had done it quickly roused her, and she panicked. I hokage sama by you little shit dot with that she left the office very, very quickly, with a deep red blush. So what did you wish to say to me about Jiji? Why did you leave the village and why did you listen to the fox? Flashback if you do not wish to read the whole flashback jump to the training portion or skip the flashback. Six months to the attack on Naruto's life. Nine-year-old Naruto was walking down to the academy on a relatively sunny day in the ninja village of Dot as the young blonde was walking to the academy, the villagers spotted him just like they always did, but instead of leaving him alone, they started to form a mob. Great looks like I might have to run to the academy. As Naruto started to think of a way to get to the academy safely one of the villagers threw a rock at him and hit him in the head, causing blood to start to pour down from the injury. At him. Kill the demon, why don't you guys just leave me alone yelled Naruto as he started to run, I never did anything to you. Shut up, demon, you will not plague us anymore. As Naruto was running for his life he missed a group of the villagers steep out in front of him and caught him off guard. Now we will finish what Yandame started, you demon scum. As they started to beat him, Naruto continued to ask himself why what did he deserve to be beaten like this. Please stop son please I didn't do anything to you why are you doing this job? Once the villagers were through beating the young blonde he was left a bloody broken mess on the ground. Before Naruto lost consciousness he noticed that several of the ones who beat him were ninjas of the village. So much for them to protect and serve the people of the village. Hey I have an idea let's take him to one of the training grounds and tie him up and leave him for the wild animals. The chorus of yous range throughout the streets. Time skip. The Naruto's training, goddammit don't stop moving. Keep that sword off the ground. Come on man, can I at least take a small break I have been at it for 15 hours. You have a 5 minute break then we will get back to work and go ahead and dispel your clones. As Naruto dispelled his clones every 10 he calmed himself and let the information seep in. Once they were all done Naruto spoke up. Hey Fox, is there a way for you to give me all of your information skills and such? Where the hell did you get that idea? From this book Naruto held up a book the fox knew all too well. One of my clones read this one, while the rest read the others in your library. The fox paled at this. Do you mean all of the books in my library? Yep even this little orange book right here. Now the Kaiubi was sweating bullets. Who would have thought that the most feared demon in the world was a perv? I am not a perv I was just holding that book for someone. Right now here is the deal I know about the mind meld and soul meld you can do, and I want you to do it, so I won't have to study the sword styles for years. So you just want the Kenjutsu and nothing else getting a nod from Naruto he pushes on. And if I don't do it. Then I will tell everyone who knows of you and I will tell them that you are a closet perv. The Kaiubi paled at the thought of all of his respect gone just due to his perverse nature. After deciding that he would rather have the fear and respect he has now and not lose it due to a book he accepted the deal. You know you are real lucky I can't kill you right now, due to the fact I will die also. I know said Naruto with a smug smile on his face. I am going to go and set up for the ritual, but I am only giving you half of my knowledge on Kenjutsu. What why only half? Because you little shit if I gave you all of it at once you would die. The silence spread through the area very quickly. Let me ask you something Kaiubi why do you care what happens to me and tell the truth? Alright, alright you kind of grew on me, and plus if you die I die. The silence regaining control over the land crept over them both and made them feel uncomfortable. So you do care for cough, you're one of the few people that actually cares for me. When Naruto looked up he was crying, but they were tears of joy not of sadness or pain. God damn it kid don't cry I feel bad as it is because of me you are constantly beaten and harmed and can never have real friends. When the Kaiubi looked up he saw Naruto swaying with half-lidded eyes before falling forwarded into his arms. Time skip. Well kid we have been out here for 6 months and we will be heading back now. Dot to think he has come this far in only 6 months, he has mastered 3 sword styles and made his own. His Tejutsu and Ninjutsu are high swords. He is easy and he sucks. Then flashback, they sat staring at Naruto for a while before he spoke up. You still didn't tell me anything and where are your swords? First I don't want to divulge my secrets about my training, and they are right here inside this scroll. 
After Naruto pulled out the scroll and unsealed it there sat three of the most beautiful swords Zeratobi had ever seen. The katana was set in a solid black sheath with a nine tails fox wrapping around it with a solid black handle. The guard on the sword was that of the fox climbing up the blade with nine tails branching off in every direction pointing up. When he pulled the blade out of the sheath his breath caught in his throat. The blade was a solid chrism red with a black fox and black flame surrounding the fox. The next one he saw was the dual kadachi. They were set in a solid blue sheath. One blade was a blood red that faded into a night black with a solid red fox guard with a black tip tail. The other was a night black that faded into a blood red with black fox guard with a red tip tail. I must say Naruto-kun, these swords are beautiful. Now how well can you use them and what are your skills in general? It was several minutes before Naruto answered. You know I really don't know I have never been tested, so I am unsure of my skill level. Hey kid, summon me, and I will tell the old man your skill level. Okay hang on well Jiji, I found a way for you to find out. As Naruto finished that sentence he started a set of hand seals. Summoning. When the smoke cleared here as in Saratobi stared at a man that was 6 foot 2, with long black hair and red streaks running through it. His eyes were chrism red with a black slit in the center. I am guessing that you are the Kaiubi. After receiving a nod he continued, Sai so can you tell me Naruto's skill level. Yes I can Hokage-sama. After hearing the greatest of the show him respect. I believe that his Tajutsu and Ninjutsu are low chunin, and his is Anbu level. They could not believe his ears. This young boy who was only 10 was Anbu level with a sword. Could I get a demonstration sure we just need someone to spare him, and also all his total skills are special, but that's with his Nintai and Ken. Okay I have the perfect Pearson who he can spar with, but what about him? Well yeah he has no skill with it at all he can barely spot one. If it is over C ranked he can't even tell he is in a dot. Hey. Haha, <laughs> well now shall we go to the roof and start our demonstration. Sure but where is the one you said will spar him? After the question was asked a woman with purple hair and slandered Anbu armor and a cat mask. This is Yuigao, she is our best specialist we have in Anbu. She will spar and gauge Naruto-kun's abilities. With a nod they all went to the roof for their match. When they reached the room Naruto and the Kaiubi saw several Anbu there. So I am guessing that they are here to watch. Yes Yuigao is like I said the best, so they all wanted to see the one who would challenge her. I'm okay I will be over there reading. As he walked away Suratobi saw him pull out a little orange book and start to read. No one to overlook another fan of the book he walked over to him. You know I have the rest of the series if you would like to borrow them. Please, please, please can I Kaiubi was jumping around in joy that he could finish the series. Seeing one of the strongest beings ever begging him for a book was quite funny. Sure I will give you the rest of them when this is over. But that they turned back to see the two getting ready for their match. One of the Anbu present faced them both, are you ready with a nod from both he jumped away. Begin. But that Naruto shot forward with speed not seen in someone his age. As he neared his opponent she drew her sword and struck but hit nothing but air. Looking around she spotted him up above her bringing his sword down for a slash. As she jumped back from the slash barley avoiding it, she noticed a large gash in the concrete ground. Never thought I would see that style in my lifetime, which would also explain your very impressive speed, Yuzumaki-san. Thank you Yuga-san. Your knowledge and skills are also very impressive. Wow he has lasted longer than most. Yo yeah, but what was that style he used? I have never seen it before. The Anbu that's present looked towards the Hokage and the one who trained the young blonde, but found them both giggling perversely and reading identical orange books. Most of the Anbu sweat dropped, but a few of them were inching closer so they could read the books as well. No Suki, don't believe him, he just wants your money no one could believe what they were hearing from the man that was said to be the Kaiubi. That's supposed to be my sensei and man. Why are all of the guys I meet pervs? Naruto was brought out of his absence by a female voice in front of him. I am sorry you gauss and what was that? I said Haiden Mitsurugi, a style I have studied very intensely and have found a way to counter it, but it won't be easy. Dot with that said she rushed forward and brought the sword down for a slash, then changed into a stab. Naruto dogged at the last second and was stabbed in the shoulder. Well, well it seems that my fastest style won't work on you. A lot of the attacks are single strikes and fast follow-ups, but if I am constantly defending from rap jabs and slashes, I can't use my speed very well. Switching his sword to his left hand and sliding his hand down to the point of the blade, he took up his new stance. Um, so you also know the Hirazuki that is very impressive. Thank you this may not be my best style, but I am still proficient in this style. After they both changed styles they charged to start a new fight. Naruto reached his opponent first and delivered several rap stabs, while Yuigao was delivering slashes from all angles. Everyone was shocked by the boy's speed and skill with his sword. He was holding off their best and possibly winning. Holy shit man this kid is good. He is holding his own against Yuigao. I know. Man never would have thought it possible. Just then Naruto and Yuigao separated, breathing heavily. Both of them were covered in several small cuts and stab wounds. 
I must say you Gao San you are quite good, and for that I will show you the style that I have made myself. It is a combination of Hirazuki and Haiten Mitsurugi. I call it Tagaka Ryan Inpo. As the thought of such a style passed through her mind, she could not help the ever-growing respect for the boy grow even more. As Naruto changed his style once again he pulled out one of his kadachi in his right hand and held it in a reverse grip, with his arm fully extended to where the edge of blade was pointing towards his opponent, and the tip pointed down. His other hand held the sword out to his left side in a reverse grip with his elbow slightly bent. His feet were slightly turned out and his knees bent. The style that uses both the Hirazuki and the Haiten Mitsurugi is nerve-wracking to say the least. I will not lie Yuzumaki-san the thought of what this style can do makes me nervous after she said that all of the Anbu and the who just stopped reading his smut gasped. Some of the Anbu even paled slightly at the thought of Yuga being nervous. Well thank you for being honest and I will be honest with you. I have not fully completed this style or mastered it, but here goes. But that both combatants rushed forward and met in the middle in spray of sparks and clashing metal. Whenever one would slash the other would parry. Neither one would give an inch. Finally the match ended with a double knockout. Holy shit he actually took on Yugao and almost beat her. Shit man, he brought her into a tie. I have never seen anyone last that long against her. Due to their fight they both were extremely exhausted and had to be taken to the hospital for physical exhaustion. When they reached the hospital the nurse at the desk saw Naruto and sneered at the boy. When she saw all of the Anbu, she thought that maybe his time had come. So Hokage-sama, is it time for the demon to die? The nurse was about to ask another question when the entire room became heavy and very difficult to breathe. When she looked she saw the Anbu without their masks glaring at her and releasing a large amount of killing intent. This young boy here will be treated properly and with respect or you will be taken to a bicky. After the said that the woman immediately paled, not only was the Hokage protecting the boy, but so was the majority on Kanoha's Anbu. Once the nurse had shown them to an empty room they set both Naruto and Yugao in there and let them rest. After several days in the hospital due to physical exhaustion, the young blonde hero Naruto Uzumaki was out and about. As he walked through the village he was receiving his normal glares and hate-filled looks. Damn villagers, they're lucky I can't kill them or I'd lose my chances at being a ninja. As he neared the academy he realized that this was the day of the graduation exam. After today he would be rid of the academy and can start his days as a ninja. X. As he entered the academy he saw his usual friends in the back of the class. A boy with a pineapple-like haircut, a chubby boy eating a bag of barbecue flavored chips, another with gravity-defying hair and a high color hiding his face, and a loud boisterous boy with red tattoo-like markings down his cheeks. Hey Shikamaru is that Naruto down there asked the fat boy eating a bag of chips. Um. Damn it Choji. I was taking a nice nap too and yeah, I believe it is the same blonde hair and everything dot with that said, the lazy ninja went back to his nap. There was a loud explosion and the room filled with smoke in there, standing back to back before the class was two dot, one had a scar running across his face, and the other was a man with long silver white hair. Once all of the kids saw the two instructors they took their seats. Alright class today is the day of the graduation exams dot said the scar dot, we will be calling you in alphabetical order. You will need to pass all three parts of the test in order to graduate dot with, that said he called the first student back. When it got to a certain black-haired emo prick all of the girls cheered for him, boosting his ego even more. As Naruto sat there, he noticed that it was taking a little too long, and that the clock was no longer moving. Um so I'm in a Jinjutsu already huh it seems pretty low, so it's not someone trying to fail me. He brought his hands up to the required hand sign, Kai and instantly broke. Or so he thought. After breaking the initial he was greeted with the sight of the whole village burning and him in the center of it. Why Naruto? Why did you do this to our village asked the old as he cried over all of the lives lost. I should have listened to the council and killed you a long time ago Dottie lunged at the young blonde with a kunai drawn. As the blonde dodged the enraged, he was having a small talk with his inner thoughts. Hey Kai Ubi, what is the meaning of this? None of it seems right. Man kid are you really that dense this is about low B ranked. Maybe I should give you the Sharingan earlier than I planned. Yeah, that probably would have been a good idea, damn it. As he was yelling at the fox, he failed to notice the illusion of the dot it got too close and stabbed him in his gut, puncturing his small intestine. Hey. God damn it kid just break the illusion. As he brought his hands up to the proper sign Kai then the illusion was broken. As the images faded and his wound healed he saw a smiling Mizuki. That nonsense is trying to fail me. Just ignore it if he keeps trying then tear him apart. As the fox finished his statement Naruto was given his score. Well it looks like you can see some, so I guess you get half credit, so you better hope you can pass the rest with flying colors. As the smile on Mizuki's face spread, Naruto was filled with anger. Alright everyone please follow me outside for the next two parts of the test. As the whole class filed out of the classroom, Haruka stood before them all ready to explain the next part of the test. Alright this is the second part of the test. 
you will have 10 tries to hit at least 6 of the targets to get a passing score on this portion. As they all were handed their kunai, Haruka finished the explanation. Alright, now let's get this over with. Will Iko Aimi please step forward? As the young girls started off the names continued to be called in alphabetical order. When the list reached one Sasuke Chiha the class erupted in cheers, the girl portion anyway. Sasuke you're the greatest yeah. Nothing can stop him. As the cheers continued one blonde hair Jinchuriki was getting quite furious with it all. Will you all just shut up? After his outburst the class immediately quieted down and continued with the test. Uzumaki Naruto, please step forward. As soon as the test began he threw all 10 of his kunai at once. He hit every target. Mole miss looks like you failed this part of the test. Said Mizuki. Mizuki, what are you talking about? They were all direct hits. Maybe you should go and get your eyes checked. Said Aruka. As Mizuki glared at Aruka, Naruto walked back inside the classroom, not really caring either way. Just before he was about to sit down, Aruka walked inside. Um, Naruto, the next part is to jutsu, so you need to come back outside. So the young blonde walked back outside to see the Ichiha wiping the floor with the instructor, but why shouldn't he since everything is handed to him? Alright Naruto you will be facing Mizuki in this portion of the test. Naruto slipped into his own stance that the Kaiubi had taught him, but had told him that it was only step one of the true form that had no name. Mizuki could only smirk at the style, not really caring that he was supposed to use the academy style to jutsu. He now decided to use a style all of his own. So the demon thinks he can beat me into jutsu. Yeah right thought Mizuki. Hey demon, what is that style you are using said Mizuki, sneering at him. It's a style that I made up, I call it Teizen If you wish to see how it works, then come one and fight me. Even though he was lying he knew that the style was not a style, but a base for a more advanced style. As soon as he finished his taunt at Mizuki, the teacher charged at the young blonde with the intent to end this and end it fast. You're going to regret this demon brat said Mizuki as he laughed maniacally. Naruto just stood there watching him get closer and closer with every step, and then he struck. Her stance joint decapitation. He shouted out as he began to spin, weave, and dance around Mizuki. He delivered devastating palm thrusts and other forms of kicks and punches to the joints of his opponent. As Naruto finished, he stood to his full height of 5 foot 5 and turned to everyone. The match is over, he will not be able to move at all until he gets medical attention. Haha, <laughs> don't count me out yet, you damn demon fox. As Naruto turned around, he was blindsided by Mizuki, who speared him into a wall. As Naruto went to stand up he was violently kicked in the ribsage repeatedly, until Mizuki heard a satisfying crack. Haha. <laughs> so you can be hurt huh demon. Let's see how much blood I can get out of you. As he went for another kick his leg was suddenly grabbed by an iron-like grip and lifted into the air. So you were able to take my first dance huh? Well let's see if you can survive the second dance. As Naruto stood back up, he went back into his tojutsu stance, with one arm bent out to his side, and his other arm pointed down to his feet, his legs bent outward with his toes pointed in. Second dance tendon breaks down. Just like the first time Naruto weaved and spun around and into Mizuki, but with one difference instead of hitting his joints, he struck all of the tendons in the body. Just stay down Mizuki-san, you cannot fight like this. Your joints are damaged, and all of your tendons are either shredded or ripped. You cannot win. But Mizuki still stood to face Naruto. He looks over and notices the other teachers and Samanbu move to stop him. Don't you move or I will blow you us all up. Shouted Mizuki as he unzipped his jacket to show his body rigged with numerous explosive tags, with a threat to the children and countless citizen and shinobi casualties high they back down. If you wish to be like this then I will show you my third dance and end your life. As Naruto locked eyes with Mizuki and prepared to deliver his killing blow he was struck from behind. Haha. <laughs> How did you like my shadow clone, you demon scum. The smile Mizuki was wearing was officially wiped off of his face, I think I need to end this and end it now. Third dance bone destroyer. Unlike his first two attacks his third was the most devastating. He struck Mizuki's chest, ribs, spine, legs, arms, neck and all other bones in the man's body, till all were shattered to dust. I will only tell you this once Mizuki if you try to stand or fight me now all of those bone fragments will pierce your lungs, liver, kidneys and all of your other internal organs. When Mizuki tried to stand he was instantly sent into a world of pain. All of his bone fragments were moving into and through all of his organs repeatedly. Anbu please remove him from the premises. Said the scared Aruka Yaminko. As the Anbu removed Mizuki from the area they all sent one last look at the young blonde. Many had seen his fight with Yugao the previous day and were still impressed by him. Well now that, that little problem was taken care of, let's finish the test. Shall we? With Mizuki being removed from the area the rest of the class went on to finish their test. Aruka sensei I thought the Tajutsu part of the test was the last part. What is the last part asked one genin hopeful. No, the genin exams consist of three parts, the first one was dot the second was the tojutsu. 
and the last is ninjutsu. Azuruka finished explaining the test to all of his students as fill-in for Mizuki showed up. Hi, my name is Kenshin Yakamura, I will be your replacement for Mizuki. The now introduced Kenshin was a short man of 5'3 with long red hair who was at least mid-twenties. He had a cross-shaped scar on his check with a katana strapped to his side, which was a strange weapon for a ninja. Yes I use Kenshin from the anime, and no he will not play a major role in the story. Excuse me Akamura sensei I have a question dot said the whiskered faced blonde. Yes, what is it young man asked the new teacher who looked up and spotted the young blonde. Why do you carry a katana in the ninja world wouldn't a katana be a slow weapon? Well normally it would, but my particular style is very hard to beat. Due to the fast movements that is required to make the style work and I'm not a ninja, I am just a teacher who used to travel to many different lands and picked Konoha as my final home. Explained the young teacher. Ah I see, but what style are you a master of because the only one I know of that would work with a katana is the height Mitsurugi. Dotted, the name of his kenjutsu style, he stared at the blonde haired boy with complete and utter confusion. How do you know that style asked the swordsman, slightly worried. I know of it because I am also a student and master of the style. Dot as he said that he unsealed his swords onto his desk and strapped them to his waist. I was also taught two other styles and have made my own. So the rumors of a blonde haired boy beating Yuugao in a battle using my style are true. Yes it is true, but I did not beat her, and I am still a few years off from being good enough to be considered a true master. Well maybe we can test your true skills with the style and determine if you can be considered a true master sometime in the future. As the rest of the class looked on in confusion at the two now revealed swordmasters, Haruka thought now was a good time to finish the test. Small time skip, well, that is everyone and now the test is over Haruka san. Yes it is Kenshin san. I'm glad that so many passed, but will they pass their next test is the real question. We just have to have faith in the next generation of hopefuls that they will succeed, but to be honest there was one in particular that piqued my interest. Let me guess, one Naruto Uzumaki. Yes, that young man has so much potential, and yet so little effort at showing it. He is a mystery and a dangerous one at that dotted, the look of confusion on Aruka's face he started to explain. We do not know his full strength, and he supposedly mastered a style that has taken most of my life to come close to mastering, and yet he is only 13. I believe we should watch out for him. Naruto, just how strong are you going to become? Thought Aruka as he stared off into the sky thinking of one hyperactive blonde boy that was Naruto Uzumaki. After the events of the previous day you would find one Naruto Uzumaki sleeping in. He had slept in through his alarm which was supposed to wake him up at 5, so he could do some training before he had to go to the academy. Naruto woke up shouted on irritated Aruka Yamino. Don't make me come in there. As Aruka continued yelling at Naruto to get up he never realized the blonde figure creeping up behind him. Hey Aruka sensei the young blonde shouted behind his old teacher. The irritated turned and faced the whiskered blonde and gave him a glare that spelled death. You know Naruto-kun I may only be a, but I do have the strength of a jown and shouted the scared dot. The blonde's look of humor turned to one of pure and unbridled fear. The thoughts of what his old sensei could do to him bordered on some of his biggest fears at the time. I'm sorry Aruka sensei I just wanted to have some fun. Dot the look of pity on the blonde's face made Aruka Yamino feel a little guilty that he had scared the young blonde so much. It's fine Naruto, but we need to be getting to the academy, or else you will miss the chance to get your headband. Dot explained the scared Dot. I know Aruka sensei so let's go. Dot as the two walked through the streets of the village, the young blonde finally realized how hateful and disgusted the stares of the people around him were towards him. Hey Fox, tell me something, why did you attack my village all those years ago? Honestly, the real reason behind my attack was that I was tricked by one man named Madara Echeha, the founder of the Echeha clan. How did he trick you? He used the power of the true Sharingan on me at that time and put me under a very powerful that made me attack the village of an a blind furry. Oh I see how that would happen, thank you. You're welcome kid now pay attention. Throughout his conversation with the Kaiubi the boy never realized that he was already at the academy and in his seat. As he looked back up he noticed that Aruka was going through the team list, but he had already known what his team would be. Flashback, you called me Jiji. Yes Naruto-kun please come in and have a seat. Dot. Once the young boy had taken a seat he began his explanation. Now Naruto what I am going to tell you is S ranked, so please wait till the end to ask questions. I am placing you on team 7 with Kakashi Haddock, Sasuke Chiha and Sakura Hirano. Now normally this information would not be given out, but these circumstances you need to know. Siratobi here is in waited for Naruto to take in all of the info. I believe that Sasuke's mentality is unstable. So you want me to spy on him and report to you after receiving a nod from the old man he asked he next question. But why not have Kakashi Sen do it? The dark look that came over the aged Hokage's face gave Naruto a foreboding felling. He originally was but the council has made it to where he cannot do that. What? But you're the Hokage how can the council decide anything that involves your ninja? 
don't worry Naruto after your graduation things will change, starting with the council. Assured the Hokage, and with the blonde knowing his mission, the Hokage dismissed him. Then flashback, and finally Team 7 will be Sasuke Kachiha, Sakura Haruno and Naruto Uzumaki. Your Jounin sensei will be Kakashi Haddock. As Aruka finished telling everyone their respected teams, he left the class to mingle with each other and get to know their teams better. As the minutes ticked by one by one, the teams started leaving, and then the only ones left waiting was the members of Team 7. One pink haired girl started to shout. Where the hell is he? He should have been here by now. Just as she started to get into her rant, the door slid open. And standing in the entry of the doorway was a man standing at six foot, even with tall gravity defying gray hair and his headband covering her left eye. And the lower portion of his face was obscured by his mask. Hi my name is Kakashi, and I'm assuming that you are Team 7. So met me on the roof. Rooftop. After his team finally made it to the top of the academy building, he immediately took in their appearances. Alright so let's begin with your names, likes, dislikes and goals for the future. Um Kakashi sensei can you give us a demonstration please ask the pink haired banshee. Sure my name is Kakashi Haddock. As for my dislikes and likes I don't feel like sharing and I really don't have any goals for the future. As he finished his introduction one thought raced through all of their heads, all we learned was his name. Alright so you start us off pinky dot at hearing the nickname the young girl was really starting to dislike her new sensei. Alright my name is Sakura Haruno. My likes or looks over at Sasuke and sequels. My dislikes are Eno Pig. My goals for the future dot looks over at Sasuke again and sequels even loader. Okay you next blonde dot the whiskered faced blonde just looks up at the jounin and sighs. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. My likes are training, Raymond, Kinjutsu and reading. My dislikes are people who use others, only seek revenge, fangirls, look at Sakura, and betray the village. My goals for the future I don't feel like telling any of you. After the blonde had finished, Kakashi gave the boy a proud look. Maybe they won't be that bad I just hope they all can work together. As he finished his thoughts he turned to the last one in the group. Alright your last Mr. Doom and Gloom. My name is Sasuke Cha. I have no likes or dislikes, and my dream no my ambition is to kill a certain someone. As he finished several different thoughts were racing through all of the individual's minds. Stupid emo prick, Naruto, oh Sasuke is so cool, do I even need to say. Great just what I need in Achiha with a stick up his face and seeking revenge. Okay my first thought of you all is I don't like you. Well now then tomorrow meet me at training ground 7 at 6 mo, and don't eat breakfast or you will throw up. After all of the introductions were over with Kakashi stood up and shunshined away. As the group stared at the spot where the Jounin was just standing not moments before. Well bye Sasuke, Sakura I will be seeing you tomorrow. As the blonde started to leave his team the pink haired banshee said something that surprised everyone that had heard her say it. Hey Naruto why don't you Sasu kun and I go and get something to eat as a team so we can get to know each other a little better. As the blonde stared at her, he realized that she was being censor and that she really did want them to get closer together as a team. No thank you Sakura sen I have some training to do today, maybe tomorrow after we are through with the meeting with Kakashi sensei. As he walked away Sakura was a little down that her team was not trying to bond with each other. She knew that they would be with each other for a while, so she knew that they should become close due to the fact that they will become as close as family in the years to come. I know I made Sakura more caring. Somewhere in the village. Naruto had just arrived to his favorite and most secluded training area in Konoha. The only people who knew of the spot were him, the and his students. The area was littered with trees and other types of foliage. The tree line was so dense that Naruto was sure that no one would be able to see him as he trained. Hey kid, summon me out so I can give you something. Even though he was curious as to what the fox could possibly give him, he decided to listen and ask once he had summoned the mighty demon to the outside. Naruto does the required hand seals and draws a small amount of blood before slamming his hand down on the ground. Summoning Dot in a puff of red smoke there before him stood a man that was 6 foot 2, with long black hair and red streaks running through it. His eyes were still the same chrism red with a black slit in the center, and his canines still looked like fangs. The only difference was that instead of what he wore the first time he had seen his human form, he now wore what looked like traditional samurai armor. With a normal looking katana that had a red sheath with designs of both forms of the Sharingan up the side till the guard of the sword. One side had a normal looking Sharingan, but the other had one that was very weird. They no longer had the three tomatoes, but they were all combined into one. Okay you are out here now so tell me what it is that you wish to give me and what is that on the other side of the sheath. As the fox glanced down at the Sharingan he felt a small amount of shame for his creation. When he looked back up at Naruto he was full of sadness, but he did not know why. Maybe the little shit has finally grown on me. But this is still going to be funny as hell to watch. Alright Naruto, this sword is how the Achiha received their eyes. How does a sword help me get the Sharingan eye exactly at the blonde's question the fox couldn't help but laugh and let a smile creep across his face. 
Step a little closer and I will show you. As Naruto stepped closer, he held up his hand for him to stop. Now this is going to hurt so brace yourself kid. Just as he was about to swing, Naruto held his hand up. You still never told me what's going on and what the gift I'm getting is. God you're a moron sometimes kid. You're getting the cursed eyes of the Achiha. But what's with the sword the fox decided to not even answer the question, but unsheathed the sword faster than Naruto's eyes could follow. All he was able to see was a solid black blade with a red edge flash across his eyes. At first all he saw was black, then his eyes readjusted and he was able to see again. What was that are you trying to cut my eyes out? Oh it's not over yet boy just wait. At the confused look on Naruto's face he started to laugh. Remember how I said it would hurt after receiving a nod he continued. Well you see it's not an immediate pain, and I lied it's going to hurt like a bitch in exactly 3 2 1 now. Immediately, after he said it Naruto was in a world of pain. He knew nothing other than the pain in his eyes. The looks of the villagers, the treatment that he had endured for their protection at keeping the fox at bay, and yet he still loved the village. Even when his skull was on fire he could only think of the ones that really cared for him, the, and the two people that ran the Roman stand, and in a small way even Kaiubi himself. You idiot what is wrong with you? When I can see I'm going to kick you soon the pain left his eyes, but spread through the rest of his body. His very cells in his body were ripping and repairing too fast, and causing his body to react violently. As the watch Naruto roll on the ground holding his eyes, he couldn't help but laugh at the boy's pain. Oh stop your bitching, it will be over here in a minute or two. As if on cue the pain that Naruto had been feeling had surpassed. As he stood on shaky legs he glared at the with so much mirth and distaste that it would have put Sasuke's glares to shame. I am going to kick you, you son of a bitch. Just as Naruto was walking forward he collapsed right on his face. Don't even try to get up and fight or attack me. The pain you just experienced has drained you to the point of, well basically you have no more energy. As the young blonde sat there glaring at the fox, he realized that everything was much more clear and moving slightly slower. What exactly happened just now? The let a small smile grace his face at the blonde's question. Well Naruto now you have the Sharingan, and now we can begin your real training. All Naruto could do was smile at the man, and then he let the darkness and nothingness of unconsciousness consume him. Oh yes things are going to become very interesting now Naruto dot after this last thought from the he picked the whiskered marked boy and moved him to his house for some rest. At 5 in the morning daylight poured in through the curtainless windows of one Naruto Uzumaki's home, one would find the young blonde on the floor. As the sounds of the young blonde snoring aroused the other being in the apartment, the dot. God damn that boy can sleep through anything. Falling off of that damn bed of his and he still sleeps. And I swear to god he better stop snoring. As the waited a few more hours for the whiskered boy to wake up, he realized that his waiting was in vain, for the young boy did not stir or make any sign as to his being awake soon. Alright kid wake up we have work to do. The Ayubi, being somewhat of a patient man, was beginning to get annoyed. Wake up already he shouted as he kicked the boy in the face. As the young blonde finally began to stir and stand up to stretch out, he immediately hit the ground holding his head. What the hell? Why does my head feel like it's on fire? As they watched him writhe in pain he began to explain. Well when you received the damn Sharingan I had to slice your eyes with my sword now normally I could have altered your DNA a little, but you had no Ichiha blood in you, so I had to do it the hard way. As he pulled out the same black and red katana that Naruto had seen yesterday the stopped as he noticed something. On the sheath in place of the normal red with the black Tomo Sharingan, there was a blue with red tomatoes. The new Sharingan was quite a mystery due to the normal colors being red and black, not blue and red. Did he unlock a new version of that damned eye the Ichiha are so proud of? Hey Fox what were you saying you kind of stopped talking all of a sudden dot after looking into the boy's eyes, he noticed that his iris was no longer the normal black but solid red now. Naruto activates your eyes for me real quick dot once he saw the confusion on the boy's face he explained. Send some chakra to your eyes to activate your Sharingan. I want to check something. But the nod the blonde haired boy activated his Sharingan and the effects were immediate. Their staring back at him was a brand new Sharingan eye that he never made nor had he ever seen. The blue and red Tomo Sharingan could be a very powerful one compared to the original, or it could be inferior. You are a very interesting young man, Naruto Uzumaki. Let's hope you don't fall to the curse of the Sharingan I would like to see how you turn out. So can I deactivate these yet it still hurts to have them on. As Naruto stared at the nine-tailed fox he became curious as to what had made the fox nervous. Yes you can, Naruto. I just wanted to confirm something. As his eyes faded the Kaiubi continued. Starting tomorrow we will begin your training in the use of the Sharingan, so today you just rest and let your eyes adjust. Dot with that said the disappeared in a puff of smoke back to the mindscape and his jail inside of Naruto. Well since I'm awake I might as well go for a run. Dot said the blind, as he began to pick his clothes out for the day. As he walked over to the closet he began to think about what they had said and began to fear for his health, because last time they made his training schedule, it nearly killed him. 
As he thought this over he began to pick out his clothes for the day. He picked out a solid blue mesh undershirt with red arm wrappings and a solid black pair of khaki pants. On the inside of the pants and the mesh shirt were three gravity seals in the mesh shirt and the khaki pants to total 300 pounds overall. Each gravity seal pumped with enough chakra to balance them out so that he wouldn't be offset in battle. Middle of the village, as he began his walk to one of the numerous training fields for his run, he ran into the last person he wanted to see right now. Sakura Hirano the pink-haired banshee of was walking right in front of the blonde-haired boy and bumped right into him. Hey watch where you're going you moron dot screamed the banshee. When she looked to see who she bumped into she noticed that it was Naruto. As the blonde boy looked at the girl one thought passed through his mind and he voiced that thought. You really are a loud annoying bitch and next time why don't you watch where you're going dot with that said the whiskered boy walked off to one of the many lush full training grounds in Konoha. Hidden training field 43. As Naruto walked through the deserted training ground he came to a large lake. As he stared at the lake and was about to begin his training he noticed something, a slim figured something, on the other side of the lake. Once he activated his new Sharingan to see what it was he noticed it was the purple-haired vixen he had spared with. As she came up to the surface he noticed that the water hung to every curve of her body and slowly trailed down her body. As she began to turn around he noticed her perfectly. He began to scan over her perfectly shaped body and noticed every inch of her body was well-toned and muscular as the sunlight glistened off the water droplets clinging to her perfect form. With Jurea, as the white-haired man began to stare up from the bathhouse he was doing research at one thought came to his mind. My perverted senses are tingling. Back with Naruto, the figure he had been watching for close to an hour, now began to walk closer towards his side. As she looked up to the shore where her clothes were, she noticed a lone figure watching her. Goddamn pervert. I just have to teach him a little lesson on women's privacy. As Yu Gao began the hand seals, Naruto noticed that he had copied all of them instantly and knew just how much shit he was in. One good thing about her doing that though was I counted four bounces. Water style. Water dragon jutsu dot screamed Yugao as she launched into Naruto. Hey I'm sorry I didn't know it was you dot yelled Naruto as he ran with tears running down his face in fear as they hit him full force and pushed him into the gates of training ground 44. As Yugao walked over to the fence, fully dressed now, to strangle the man she caught peeping on her. As she neared the down boy she noticed his whisker mark checks and golden blonde hair as he lay upside down on his head. Why were you peeking at me, Naruto if you wanted to look, all you had to do was ask. As Naruto looked up with hope in his eyes and a slight nose bleed he asked, really all I have to do is ask. Yuga let a small smile creep onto her face before she answered him. No you goddamn perv she shouted as she slammed her fist into his face full force and sent him the rest the way through the fence. Why are all of the beautiful ones the most aggressive as Naruto wondered this as Yuga closed in on him for the kill. She stopped though as both her and Naruto heard a large and dangerously close roar. As they turned around they saw a very abnormally large tiger. Naruto-kun we should leave now, that's an S-class tiger, and he looks very hungry. The tiger that was looking at them, began to walk towards them, and before they knew it, one tiger had turned into five very large S-class tigers. Once the tigers had encircled them the alpha slowly approached them and let out a tremendous roar, signaling the others to attack. Naruto dodged an attack by the alpha and slid under his legs and struck his hind legs with a massive blow to the Achilles tendon crippling him. As Naruto slipped into his tojutsu stance as he began his assault. Hey kid you might want to hurry up and finish off these overgrown pussycats here because you need to meet up with your team at 6, so move yourself. As he reminded Naruto of his prior engagements, he decided to stop messing around and get serious. But you Gao, why did my bath have to be interrupted by Naruto and these damn tigers? Just as she finished her thoughts she felt the temperature drop several degrees and she looked over at Naruto to see his chakra was flowing freely around him in an ominous form. This isn't the no this is something worse almost more sinister and chaotic than the Kyubas. Around Naruto one would see a red, blue and black chakra wrapping and whipping around his body and tearing up the ground around his feet. As his chakra poured out the five very large tigers began to slowly back away. Looks like I can't stay in play said Naruto as his voice flocculated from normal to demonic as chakra poured through his body. As he looked back up Yuigao noticed that his eyes looked like a Sharingan but different. She noted that his eyes were blue and red, not the normal solid blue or even the normal colors of the Sharingan. Naruto what are you doing and why do your eyes look like the Sharingan? I will explain later Yuigao dot as Naruto fished his statement he changed his tojutsu stance. His right arm was brought up and over his head bent and pointing straight out. His left arm was pointed straight down towards the ground. His knees were bent so he was low to the ground and standing on the balls of his feet. Naruto please tell me what's going on because that is not the same style that you used against Mizuki. The sound of fear in Yuigao's voice was evidence enough that he was in fact becoming more feral and should get this over with quickly. Listen Yuigao just trust me. Once he was done he launched into a series of attacks. 
he launched at the Alpha Tiger faster than the normal eye could follow. As he came upon the Alpha of the group he came done with a backhanded strike to the center of the tiger's neck, killing him instantly. At the sight of their leader dying so easily turned around and ran from the two ninja that were their initial targets. Please meet me at my apartment later on today, so I can explain I have to get to training ground 7, so I can meet up with my team. With his chakra still flowing freely around him, Naruto disappeared in a blur of speed that rivaled them in terms of speed. Man he is fast, but what was that black chakra he had around him and what was up with his eyes? With her thoughts racing Yuigao slowly walked out of the forest and back to the village. With Naruto, as Naruto raced through the village at high speed he felt a very familiar chakra signature. It was the one that belonged to one Sasuke Chia. Mr. Doom and Gloom was halfway to training ground 7, when Naruto Uzumaki decided to mess with the young Uchiha prick. Hey Sasuke as the Uchiha turned to look at the blonde he noticed something very weird. Race ya. As the blonde boy flew past him he noticed what looked like the Sharingan but different. He could have sworn he saw the same pattern just with a blue iris and red tomatoes. No I must be imagining things that a blonde idiot could not have had the Sharingan dot as the Uchiha thought this through he realized that Naruto had challenged him to a race, and no Uchiha lost in anything to anyone. Let's see that Uchiha prick beat me in a speed competition. This is the start of my mission for Jiji, and if my guess is right I will have a decent amount to go on here. As Naruto went through everything in his head he decided to add his two cents to the conversation. You know it could always just mess with his mind by having your Sharingan on and when he looks deactivated. Also it's almost 7 year late as it is so I would move you like now. After the fox had told him that it was almost 7 o'clock he started to push more chakra into his legs. As he gave one big leap from the tree branch he had just landed on, he found himself right in the middle of training ground 7, but with one thing missing. Kakashi had yet to show up, all he saw was a sleeping Sakura and a panting Sasuke who had just arrived a few minutes after he did. Where the hell have you two been just as late as Kakashi sensei and then the pink haired banshee decided to be heard. Naruto being the patient man he was meaning he had no patience decided to voice his opinion. Why don't you shut them up for once? All you ever do is whine, complain and yell just like a spoiled rotten little brat. And you know what if you actually took some time to delve into your training and actually eat you might look good. The herd and tear filled look on her face only gave him more fuel for the fire. You chase after Sasuke like a lovesick puppy and you never once took into consideration how he felt about it. If I had people like you chasing me I might act like a stuck up boy with a stick shoved up my face too. Start training more and stop starving yourself and maybe just maybe you live long enough to become a Kinoichi. Everyone was silent and in shock. No one would have believed that Naruto was capable of losing his temper so badly and quickly. Not even those who had been with Naruto for 13 years now could have imagined the boy to blow up at a girl so badly. As Kakashi finally showed up, what he saw surprised him. A steaming Naruto, a crying Sakura and Sasuke looking more depressed than normal. And Kakashi sensei will start arriving on time from now on. As Kakashi looked over at the boy he saw the Sharingan. It wasn't a glimpse or a trick of his eyes. He fully saw Naruto with an activated Sharingan. I know exactly why you're always late, but you need to stop beating yourself up over their deaths and train this squad the right way. As the weight of his words fully hit him he realized something about Naruto. One he was a real team leader minus his scores throughout the academy, and he looked a lot like his now deceased sensei the fourth dot well I was going to give you all a test, but as I can see Naruto's little speech just now made you all a lot closer by the looks on your faces dot as they all looked up at him he could see that they were indeed closer and more likely to work as a team. Akashi sensei I have too little chakra compared to the others, but I have better control, so is there anything I could do? As he thought it over the only thing that popped into his head was a medic. Well Sakura you could become the team's medic ninja and be like a support unit for the two more aggressive members of our team. As she thought it through she realized that being a medic would probably help out her team more. Hey Sasuke what do you think of me being in a nurse outfit huh sounds good, don't it as she winked at Sasuke and was about to start asking him out again, she remembered Naruto's rant and looked over at him. Once she did she saw his eyes full of disapproval. Never mind Sasuke. Akashi sensei do you know of anyone that can help me with my medical ninjutsu training? As a matter of fact, my name is Itsuko Airi. He is an old man with solid white hair and dark shades. Tell him that I sent you. As Sakura left, so did Sasuke for what no one knows he just left. Kakashi was turning around and was about to leave when Naruto spoke up. Kakashi sent a word with you please as Kakashi turned around he saw that Naruto had a very serious expression on his face, and he did not look happy. I hope you're not just trying to dump this squad's training off on someone else. So I will be reporting all of this to him when I go to speak with him. Listen here Naruto I don't know who you think you are but do not threaten me or I will make sure you get sent back to the academy. For the third time today Naruto felt his tempura flare up again and himself losing control very slowly. Listen to Haddock, do not threaten me with some mid-scale trick such as the academy. 
I report solely to them so shut them up right now. As Naruto finished his sentence he felt the last of his restraint leave him and his chakra went wild with freedom. It lashed about its whirls of raw destructive power. What is this? It's not the Kyuubi's chakra it's black, blue and red. The red and blue are his and the fox's, but what is that black chakra? Now listen up Haddock, train this team and train it right. I might not be able to stop you myself, but the Hokage sure as hell can now good day you piece of shit. With that said Naruto left, but in a burst of speed that rivaled any he had ever seen. You know Haddock you used to be admired as the best Anbu captain due to your history. But now all of the Anbu and all of your fellow ninja resent and despise you. As Kakashi turned around to look in the eyes of one purple-haired Yugao Yuzuki, he noticed they were not filled with anger, hatred or any of those emotions but pity. She pitied him for all he has done since the death of his father, then soon after the death of his sensei. Yugao what should I do to fix this? My team just met me and they already hate me. All of my friends hate me, and so does everyone close to me. As Kakashi's eyes began to water his vision soon began to go blurry as the weight of all of his mistakes laid out onto his shoulders. Kakashi, stop pushing everyone away. We all want to help you, we really do, but you have to let us in for that to happen. Do what Naruto said to do first. Start being on time and train them the way your sensei would have trained them. As Kakashi went back to his days with his sensei and genin team, he realized that Yuga was right. His sensei was able to bring a team just like him into a family. They resented each other at the beginning, but once Minato sensei got a hold of them they changed. That's exactly what I will do. I will take Minato sensei's teachings and tactics and use them for my team. As Kakashi left the training field Yugao started heading to Naruto's apartment to get some answers from the young blonde. Naruto's apartment. As Yuga reached the door of the rundown apartment building she was just about to knock when the door swung open. There sitting in a chair staring at the door sat the same person she had come to see. Alright Naruto start explaining yourself, what was that black chakra and what was that tojutsu style you used? As Naruto looked up at her he couldn't fight back the smile that was creeping onto his face. First I will explain the black chakra. The black chakra came about due to two major events in my life. The first being the training with the dot. How was that a major event in your life? Well besides the fact you became really strong from it dot as she was thinking through how that could amount to the black chakra she noticed that smile returning to his face. Well for starters during the process of training my body and mind I came across this book dot as he pulled out a book that was riddled with ancient markings, he continued his explanation. This book told of a way for me to become a walking chakra warehouse. So after reading this book and talking with a fuzzball, I began the process of becoming a Hanyu dot at a surprised look on Yugao's face he decided to explain. No, I will not be a full demon, only half. Now that's the main cause of the increase in chakra, but what gave it the black color was something totally different. The first strand of color was my Sharingan. Wait, did you just say Sharingan after receiving a nod from Naruto she continued her questions. But I thought that only the Achiha could have Sharingan. No I thought that too but in fact the way that Jinkase actually come from demons. My demon just happens to be the one and only creator of the Sharingan. But as I was saying that gave it part of the color and gave me control over my chakra a little better. The last part that gave my chakra the black color is my third affinity. Wait, you have three affinities, and you're only a genin after seeing Naruto nod in affirmative once again she was starting to wonder who he was. I know you are really strong, but still you shouldn't already have three elemental affinities. So what are they? Well they are fire, wind and shadow. Now before you ask any more questions let me finish. The main reason why my chakra is black is due to my shadow affinity. As I'm sure you know all demons have a special affinity, and since I am a Hanyo I also gain this special affinity. Now my abilities are not limited like that of the Nara clan, their skills are a more human way of performing these techniques. As he waited for Yugao to catch up and process all of what he just said he slowly began to activate his Sharingan. Now I believe that I explained myself sufficiently enough so if you have any questions feel free to ask them. Well first, how does your Sharingan affect your chakra color? I can understand having better control, but I do not see how it gives you the black color chakra. Well honestly I don't know myself all I know is after I activated my Sharingan for the first time I gained the shadow affinity, so I believe that it just kind of awakened my affinity. As Yu Gao started to think of more questions she realized that she only had one really big one. So why the hell were you watching me take a bath earlier in the training grounds? Remembering what he had seen at the training grounds Naruto started to blush and a small stream of blood slowly began to run down his face. Um, well you see that was an accident, and I am really sorry about that. Right, sure you were Naruto-kun. As Yuugao stood up to leave she had a really evil idea. Hey Naruto-kun, come here real quick. As Naruto was close enough she leaned in and gave him a small kiss on his cheek. I'll be seeing you around Naruto-kun. And with that said the purple-haired Anbu left via a swirl of leaves. As the young blonde boy stood there staring at where she was just at it finally hit him. 
she kissed me dot as the image and feel of it finally caught up to him he fainted with a large perverted grin on his face. The Kaiubi no Kitsune was the most feared creature in the existence of the world, yet not even he was able to beat his current adversary waking up a sleeping Naruto. This kid can sleep through anything I swear. He needs to wake up though or he is going to be late. As Kaiubi wondered how to wake the sleeping boy, one idea popped into his head. Kaiubi waited a few minutes to see if he would wake up on his own, but when he didn't the young blonde teen started to receive images of Yuga Yuzuki first. Needless to say once these images flashed through his mind he was immediately up and out of bed with a massive nosebleed. I swear one of these days I'm going to kill you. Only in your dreams kid, only in your dreams. Now forget about all of that and get dressed. You need to meet your team in 30 minutes. As Naruto proceeded to get dressed a few thoughts came to his mind. The first and foremost was how he should alter his real tojutsu style and his affinities. Hey Fox we need to talk. I think it's time. Listen Naruto, just go meet with your team and we will talk about everything when you come home tonight. Naruto wanted to push the subject more, but knew that in doing so would not be helpful to any of his problems as of now. With that in mind he continued to get dressed and started to leave for his team's training ground. Once Naruto arrived at training ground 7, he realized that he was the only one there. I wonder where the rest of my team is at. As he waited patiently for a full 10 minutes he decided that he should start some training. After a quick warm-up session of a mile run and 500 sit-ups, push-ups and jumping jacks, he was ready to begin his training. He started off with water walking while balancing a leaf on his forehead using only his chakra. After what seemed like hours of chakra control exercises, he moved on to tojutsu and used his sharingan. Even though his body was not fully adjusted to his new eyesight, he was slowly making progress with the abilities of the sharingan. He had long since gotten used to the movements of everything being slower than normal. The only difficulty he was having was his reaction time to the slower movements, had to be altered slightly. Maybe I can get Kakashi Sensei to help me adjust to this damned eye. As he became lost in his thoughts he never noticed his team arriving and all three witnessing his new eyes. As he took notice of his surroundings he realized that they had arrived and were staring at him. Naruto, what there you are, we have been looking all over for you. Said Kakashi as Naruto deactivated his eyes before his team could get a real good look to see if their suspensions had been true about the Sharingan. Yeah I was waiting here for you guys this whole time. So where were you guys for the past like an hour or two as, he was hoping that they had not noticed he could tell by the look he had just received from Kakashi, that he was only half successful in keeping his secret. Oh well you see I had actually arrived on time today and decided to take the team out to eat. But since you slept and you missed out. said Kakashi with an eye smile soon following his statement. Alright you guys go ahead and get started, and Naruto takes a small break before continuing. As he walked closer up to Naruto he knelt down and whispered one phrase later. Well looks like I have to explain the eyes to Kakashi sensei and hopefully only him. As the rest of his team continued to walk towards the center of the training ground he snuck off. As he began to leave he left a shadow clone to deal with the team and train with them. After leaving the training ground he headed towards the tower. Hey Gigi we need to talk. What is Naruto? I have finished the first part of my mission sir. After receiving a nod to continue he did Sasuke Chiha is so focused on revenge that he may very well kill his own allies to achieve his goal. As for Sakura and Kakashi, well they are just pathetic. How so? Well for starters Kakashi is so haunted by his past that it makes it hard for him to teach his students properly. I don't even believe that they can survive a simple C-rank mission. Sasuke is too wrapped up in his revenge he never thinks, and Sakura's skills are horrible. As Sirotobi thought this new information through he began to have a solution. Send them on a C-rank mission and see if they survive, but he can't do that. It would cause too much trouble, and the loss of such young lives would be devastating to the moral rate of everyone. Gigi, if I may suggest something it is not he explained his plan. Why not send them on a C-rank mission? I know that you're thinking that they won't come back and they will probably die, but me and Kakashi will be there. Now his teaching skills need some serious work, but he is a good ninja. Alright my boy I have the perfect one in mind. Naruto could be found walking back towards training ground 7. With the moon high in the sky, it cast an iron shadow down upon the earth and all it held. Well Naruto I'm glad that you showed up. Said Kakashi as he stepped out from behind a tree. So now I want you to explain everything about your eyes, skills and chakra. First, why don't you go ahead and put the kunai away before you start a fight that you won't walk away from dot as he said this Kakashi threw the first kunai and pulled out a second one. As the projectile neared Naruto he unsheathed his sword faster than the eye could follow and went on the offensive, activating his Sharingan in the process. But the clash of steel and sparks they met in the middle of the training ground, with Naruto immediately having the upper hand. His Sharingan was spinning madly as he stared into Kakashi's lone eye and realized that he was holding back and that he was not serious, but testing him. Naruto, giving one mighty push, leapt back and stared at Kakashi. 
You know you really shouldn't look so serious if you're just going to test a guy. Whined Naruto as he began to pout at his sensei. Well I wasn't holding back that much. I mainly just wanted to see your speed, strength and use of the Sharingan. And I'm pleased to say that you don't abuse the eyes from what I can see, but you are not that well trained with it. He said with an eye smile. But why test me and I don't have a whole lot of help you know. I have to work with the Sharingan all on my own and in secret. Well as for your first question the reason why I was testing you is because I know that you did not show me your true potential when we first met and I also know that just now you did not show me your true speed. Naruto I am your teacher, your friend and also I was there when you sparred against Yugao. Then why the hell would you want to test me if you saw that? Because I was bored, what the hell? Anyways Naruto let's begin with the explanation shall we dot said Kakashi completely blowing Naruto off and pissing him off even more. And so with Naruto glaring at him, he began the long story of the past years of training and how he received the Sharingan. Three hours after the whole story with Kakashi, Naruto was on his way back home. As he turned the corner he saw his apartment up in flames. The building was no longer savable or important to anyone, so they did nothing to put the flames out and only watched as the building dwindled into ash, one man stood watching the flames devour the building. Gigi, my house is gone. I know Naruto. I am the one who burned it. What? But why Gigi, I think you cared about me. I do Naruto which is why I am going to take you to your real house that should have been given to you a long time ago. What are you talking about Gigi? At the boy's confused look Saratobi laughed and gave him a warm smile. At the tower the two stayed across from each other. As he took one last drag from his pipe, he pulled out a sheet of papers from his desk drawer. This Naruto is the deed to a very large house and all of your parents' possessions that they had during their lives, along with the fortune that comes with it. As the boy read through the will and the deed he had hundreds of questions that came to mind, but decided to voice only one of them, did my parents love me Gigi? Yes Naruto, they loved you very much. I was not supposed to tell you this till you were either 16 or if I believed you were strong enough to handle yourself. Now after I tell you this you must keep it a secret until I deem it okay to speak of do you understand? Yes Hokage-sama dot as he bowed his head and used the honorific that he never uses, Saratobi knew that he was ready to hear about his family. Alright Naruto first let's start with your mother's will. First is her sword, Jihi. Her sword name means mercy for she never killed anyone who did not deserve to be killed. Also here is a scroll of her most powerful techniques, she was a very powerful Kinoichi, the only one who could have rivaled her was my own student Tsunade. She had three elements, they were water, lightning and fire. She used her elements in such a combination that it was almost impossible to beat her in ninjutsu. What was her name asked Naruto in a chalk voice as tears began to blur his vision. Her name was Kashina Yuzumaki, and I'm proud to say she was a great ninja and would have been a great mother if she had the chance to be one for you Naruto. What about my father asked the blonde with tears freely falling down his face as he thought of his parents. Your father was a great man. He was by far one of the strongest ninja we have ever had. He saved this village twice in his lifetime, once during the war with Iwa and when they attacked our village. Naruto, your father was Minato Namikaze, the fourth dot. He sat there letting the information set in so as to not overwhelm the young boy. My me dad was the fourth stuttered Naruto. Yes Naruto and just like your mother he left you a will, a scroll with him and the house. Now this letter is from both your mother and your father. He handed him the note that explained everything from the day of the attack to and the house that was left to him. Dear Naruto first off let me tell you that your father and I love you very much and we wish we could be there to watch you grow up. Now as I'm sure you know, the attack on the day you were born and your father and I sealed him inside of you. But what you probably don't know is that the attack due to someone making the fox attack our village. Now the scroll and sword that I left for you I want you to master. I hope that your elements are similar to mine. Well here is your father. I am going out to help stall the Kaiubi. I love you and I miss you already. Hey son let me start out by saying I love you tremendously and I know that you're wondering why I chose you to seal the demon inside of me. Well I knew that if I couldn't sacrifice my own son then how can I ask someone else to do the same for me. Alright the beast is growing close so I can't explain a lot, but the scrolls I left for you contain my greatest jutsu, the and the Horatian no dot. Now on top of my two techniques I have left you all of your mother's and my life earnings and my house that I lived in. I love you Naruto, and I am sorry that you have to make the sacrifice for a village that should view you as a hero, but probably will not. As he read the last sentence the rest was illegible. He must have had to stop writing the letter due to the attacking the village. Did you please give me their scrolls, and also hand me my mother's sword. As Saratobi handed Naruto the items he requested he decided to make a decision that will greatly help the young boy in the future. Naruto, follow me to your new home. As he stood up he grabbed a very large scroll from the vault. Gigi, what is that scroll? When we get to your new home I will show you what Naruto-kun is. As the two walked in silence, Naruto realized where the old man was taking him. 
Saratobi led the boy through the forest behind the monument and walked to a clearing in the center of the forest, where an extremely large house was sitting hidden from view by the dense foliage covering the area. This Naruto my boy is your new home. Your father had it built for the family he was starting. He never came from a clan as far as anyone here knows. He was very secretive at times, and your mother was the last of her clan until you were born, Naruto Dadi watched Naruto to judge his reaction to this news. Your mother was part of the Uzumaki clan of Whirlpool before they were wiped out during the Third Shinobi War. Why were they attacked? Well you see Naruto the Uzumaki clan were famous for their sealing arts, no one rivaled them. Then came along your father who was a natural at, some believed that he had a that no one knew about. Digi I have a favor to ask you, and it will mean a lot to me, and also help me with a lot of my problems in the future. What is it my boy? First I want you to have someone help me master the in this scroll, second I need you to have Kakashi come here now. Alright Naruto I will have Kakashi brought to your new home. With that said he signaled one Anbu agent to go and retrieve the lazy dot. As the two waited for Kakashi to arrive they sat and talked with each other for what seemed like hours. Naruto finally showed Saratobi his Sharingan and told him about his affinities. Once Kakashi finally arrived he saw his sensei's old house and he saw his student along with the sitting there waiting for him to arrive. Ah Kakashi so glad that you could make it. Now I know you are probably wondering why you are here. After receiving a nod from the he continued. First you are here to help Naruto in training his affinities and helping him with the Sharingan. Second, I wanted to inform you that your team will be going on a C-ranked mission in two months. We just received a request and the client will not be here for two months, so I want Naruto here to learn at least one new from the scrolls and be more useful with the Sharingan. Now before you even start arguing I also want you to get your team up to speed, or I will demote you down to Genin, and you will be forced to capture Tora the cat. After the Hokage's long lecture on what he expected and the consequences if he did not do just that, Kakashi decided to shape up and start working with his team, the way he really should have from the very beginning. Now since there is no light left for you to train at night you are dismissed. As the two adults left Naruto began to explore the house. He noticed that the house was very large. There were eight bedrooms and five bathrooms, a kitchen, living room and a dojo for training. In the backyard there was a large garden with its own pond in the middle. It summoned me so we can begin your training. Going through the hand seals he quickly summoned the demon lord. Alright fox you're out so what's this training you are putting me through now? Team 7 was seated in the team's new favorite eating establishment, thanks to Kakashi. They were all seated in a both inside of a sushi, steak and bakery mixed establishment. The air was thick with the smells of steaks, sweets and other assorted foods. Well you three it has been three weeks since we became a team and just under a week with the new training regiments. Now within that time frame we have grown close and have become a real team. True to Kakashi's words, within the past week the team has had a large change. One the team knows about Naruto Sharingan due to Kakashi, saying there should be no secrets between teammates. Second is Sasuke has the Sharingan as well, and last is the relationship with them all. Sasuke pulled the stick out of his mouth and became close friends with Naruto gave up his desire to kill his brother, and he even started to date Sakura. Sakura left her fangirl attitude behind and became a real Kanoichi that anyone could be proud of. She even created a few of her own for healing someone. Naruto finally found a family that appreciates him and treats him well. He stopped being as cold to people, but he is still the same troublemaking prankster. Well everyone, let's head to the Hokage's office and see what mission we can get today. As the team walked through the village Naruto and Sasuke started a game that is both fun for them and training. I see a bird 30 feet ahead of us. said Naruto. I see 4 level ninjas straight ahead. said Sasuke. Well try and beat this. 6 Anbu ninjas follow us in the standard 3x3 pattern. said Naruto with a smug grin on his face. Damn that's going to be hard to beat. Will you two just shut the hell up already? Now Sasuke how about after our mission we go and have dinner or something. asked Sakura. Sounds good to me. As the team continued their conversations a Anbu agent wearing a cat mask with long purple hair dropped in front of the group. Hey Yugi-chan. What's up? Hey Naruto I just wanted to say bye I have to leave for a mission. said Yugao as she leaned in and kissed Naruto before putting her mask back on and leaving. I still do not know how you were able to end up with someone like Yugao dope. said Sasuke with a small smirk on his face. Oh probably how you ended up with Sakura when I was sure you were gay team. I mean you had all of those girls throwing themselves at your feet and you ignored all of them until now that sounds very fishy to me. As Naruto finished his statement his head immediately met the ground courtesy of Sakura's first meeting the back of his head. Alright you guys, shape up now we have arrived at the tower. As the team climbed up the stairs to speak with the old man, as they climbed the winding staircase to the briefing room, Naruto picked up the scent of cheap sake. Ah team 7 here for another D-ranked mission. Well let's see we have walking s dogs or rebuilding, no. Gigi I am tired of doing the D-rank stuff. Can we please have at least a C-rank mission. 
well it depends on a few variables such as if your team leader believes you are ready to take on the challenges of higher missions. Flashback. Now Naruto when your team comes in next week I want you to request a mission so that it doesn't look suspicious. Bada Jiji. And flashback. I Kakashi Haddock believe my team is ready to take on a higher mission. Alright I have the perfect mission in mind for you. You four will be escorting a bridge builder back to his homeland so he may finish his bridge. Alright so who is the man that we need to escort and what are we protecting him from? Ask Sasuke. The usual bandits, thieves and wild animals. Now once you escort the man you will need to stay with him until he has completed the bridge. As Sirotobi motioned for the man to be brought in, Naruto realized the smell he had smelt walking up the stairs was this man. This is Tazuna he is the man that you will be guarding and Tazuna these are the ninja who will be accompanying you. As Tazuna canned the room he soon realized that the group was full of kids and one adult. The girl of the group was obviously dating the tallest boy and would be a distraction. The boy was also kind of lovey dovey with the girl. Lastly was the blonde who was staring off into space with three swords strapped to his hip. You call these ninja. They are just a bunch of kids. Said Tazuna as he took another drink from his sake. Those two are playing kissy faces, and the other is staring off into space without a clue. As if to prove his point, he raised his hand to throw his now empty bottle of sake when Naruto disappeared. May I suggest Tazuna send? Said Naruto in a dead cold voice behind him. It would be unwise to insult ninja no matter what their rank. To prove his point Tazuna soon felt three individual pieces of metal touching his skin, courtesy of the three genin he just insulted. Tazuna said I agree with Naruto, and I would suggest that if you insult my ninja again, that I will allow them to kill you with a serious tone creeping into the Hokage's voice, Tazuna shut up quickly. Alright team met us at the north gate in one hour. As Tazuna turned to leave his hat fell into three pieces, along with his sake bottle and his belt. Sorry about that Tazuna san, but it would be unwise to insult them again. As Kakashi gave him an eye smile he walked out of the room to find his team waiting for him outside the tower. Hey Kakashi sensei did you notice how he was kind of nervous, I think he is hiding something. I did notice Akura, but let's not forget that you three almost killed him now dot said Kakashi with an eye smile. Now you three go and get ready we leave in one hour. With Sasuke. As the last remaining loyal walked through his house he stopped and stared long and hard at a picture. The picture was of a middle-aged man and a young beautiful woman, both smiling and holding on to him and his older brother. They were Fugaku and Makoto Ichiha, his parents who were murdered in cold blood by his older brother Itachi. I swear Itachi that I will kill you and avenge our clan once and for all. Sasuke stop, revenge is never the answer. Sasuke was startled that he never knew someone was with him, he was even more surprised when he turned around and saw his blonde teammate. Naruto what are you doing here and how did you sneak up on me? I just followed you and plus I am a ninja dot said the blonde with a big grin. And second trust me revenge is not the answer besides you have a new family, Sakura, Kakashi sensei and me. We are your family. Well think about it Sasuke, but I need to go so I can pack and remember one thing for me will you at Sasuke's naughty continued. You had a family I never did. Flashback one month ago, Sasuke, what are you doing? You won't understand Naruto. I had everything taken from me, you just wouldn't understand. You are right that I don't know what it is like to lose someone because I never had anyone to lose. Ever since I was younger I was hated for something I could not control, no, I won't tell you today if and when we grow closer together as a team I will tell you. Wait, Naruto, what do you mean by you being hated by the village? Whenever you are around me and we walk through the village, watch how the people act towards me. But that he left and Sasuke never saw him till the next day. And flashback, Naruto please tell me what you meant by you have no control over the treatment and hatred of the villagers. I am truly sorry Sasuke, but I am not comfortable with telling your Sakura that right now. But that he left in a gust of wind. But Sakura. Hey mom I am leaving for about two weeks on a mission, so I will see you when I get back. Before her mother could say anything Sakura was out the door and headed towards the north gate to wait on her teammates. But Naruto. As Naruto walked into his new house after his little talk with Sasuke, he quickly began to pack his belongings for a two-week journey. Food, clothes, new sword, and the scrolls, so I can practice them more while I am gone. Hey kid, don't forget the other two scrolls. The one for your Sharingan and the style that your mother made. But I already know three styles, and I am working on my own. Why do I need to learn another one? Just quit your bitching and grab the scroll. But that the two stopped talking and Naruto finished packing. Once he was done packing he headed out to the north gate. As all three of the genin arrived at the same time they all noticed very quickly that Kakashi was not there. As they waited patiently they soon saw him walking up the path dragging a drunken Tazuna. Sorry I am late everyone, but our client here decided to make a pit stop at a few bars. Let's just get going before Naruto faints due to the smell. As Naruto stood closer to Tazuna the more his sense of smell was being affected by the drinkle. As the team began walking they soon came across a puddle when it had not rained in weeks. 
Bakashi looked up and saw to his delight that Naruto and Sasuke noticed, but Sakura sadly didn't. I will have to work some more with her. As the group walked past the puddle, out popped two ninjas, the demon brothers Gumzu and Maizu, who quickly attacked Kakashi, catching him with a chain and quickly ripping him in half. Sakura let out a very shrill yell as she watched her sensei be torn apart in front of her eyes. Sasuke let's go take care of these wannabe assassins. You let's. Both of the boys launched at one of the demon brothers with their spinning to life before the two brothers. Mzu and Maizu quickly detached the chain connecting them together and went after individual targets. Mzu began to chase after Naruto leaving his brother to deal with the other boy. Maizu ran after Sasuke as the two separated and ran to the woods. But Naruto, you can't run forever, boy, turn and fight me. Just like he asked, Naruto turned around and delivered a devastating kick to the side of his head. Damn boy that's one hell of a kick you got there, and you have the Sharingan to boot. As Naruto stared down the man he realized that everything was crisp and clear, and he could see the chakra network. Since this was his first time ever using the Sharingan in a real fight, he finally noticed how much of a difference he had with his new eyesight. I am Naruto Uzumaki, and I will be your destroyer today. He rested his hand on his sword, and as he finished his sentence he vanished with blinding speed and drew his katana for his favorite move the Batu Jutsu, sword drawing art. In one move he had successfully killed his opponent or so he thought. Damn kid that was close, if it wasn't for this armor I would be dead for sure. You see this armor is made specially to counter all weapons even with chakra, so your swords and kunai and any other weapon are useless. Picture the chakra armor from the cannon. As Gumzu began to stand, Naruto saw no mark on him, not even his armor was damaged from the blow. The armor had taken the full hit of the sword slash and somehow managed to deflect all of the damage. Okay then try this one on for size as Naruto drew his sword Gumzu prepared himself for another strike like the first. But instead he struck the ground with a chakra enhanced blow for the Duraiu Sen, ground dragon flash. As the attack neared Gumzu he calmly waited for the attack to hit. When the attack finally did hit home it was not fully deflected. Mzu's body flew through the air with a lifeless look in his eyes, but just as he was nearing the ground, he changed his position. Well looks like you have some attacks that you can make fly from your sword. That does make nullifying your sword techniques difficult, but like I said they are useless against this armor. Mzu quickly launched himself into a tajutsu fight with Naruto. Naruto quickly threw multiple punches and kicks with all of them bouncing off of his opponent's body due to the armor. Oh did I forget to mention that it also disables your tajutsu. said Mzu with a superior smirk on his face. He quickly launched a punch at Naruto's face as he was unprepared for the punch. It went straight past his guard and right into Naruto's jaw. As his head flew back it quickly doubled over as an elbow slammed into the back of his head. Quicker than most and could move, Mzu landed a double axle spin kick to Naruto's jaw, then to his nose. But the sickening crunch Naruto's nose bounced off of Mzu's boot, then off of a rock instantly breaking it. See boy you cannot win against me in this fight. As Naruto slowly stood up he had a puzzled look on his face. So that means that this will be an ninjutsu battle. Are you retarded or something asked Naruto with a confused look on his face. What do you mean? You're going to get into an ninjutsu fight with someone who has the Sharingan really. Hell you. Water Dragon. As Gumzu went through the seals Naruto had already copied he was done with his own dot. Water Dragon dot. As the two dragons clashed Naruto quickly won the fight for dominance due to his abstaining amounts of chakra. Higher style. Grand Fireball dot. Water style. Water Bullet dot. As the two opposing elements clashed a thick veil of steam grew and it continued to grow thicker. As the mist grew in density Naruto realized that his Sharingan was useless to him now. How do you like the hidden mist now your little Sharingan is useless against me? At the peak of the Guzu struck. He quickly lashed out with a few Tajutsu techniques, then he unleashed a few more water bullets. Through all of the attacks that were barraging him Naruto soon found himself running out of time. Shit with this mist so thick I'm not able to read his movements or his and I won't last much longer like this. If I can't find a way around this I will die. Wait a minute there is that one dot. Naruto slowly began to go through the necessary hand seals for his strongest wind based dot. Once his chakra was at the proper level he let loose dot wind style. Black wind hurricane. But the loud scream of both surprise and fear the winds wiped his body from the ground. As the roar to life it devastated the surrounding area with hurricane strength winds and outrageous amounts of chakra. The mist was blown away and so was Gumzu, the winds carried his body through several trees, rocks. As his head bounced off of the surrounding trees and rocks, there was a very loud crack as his neck broke. Stopping dead underneath a creek that was over a hundred feet away, Mzu's body slowly floated to the surface. Damn that was draining dot said Naruto as he stood painting inside of a deep created where the eye of the storm he unleashed was situated. He slowly turned around to walk off and realized that his body was in immense amounts of pain. As his body began to give out from chakra exhaustion, Kakashi popped into existence to catch him and bring him back to the campsite. 
You overdid it just to take out one low level, don't you think Naruto? No Kakashi sensei because he was almost to your level, whoever the two demon brothers have been traveling with, made their skill level jump to almost dot Mizu almost killed me when I was fighting against him, due to his weird armor that he had. Well then I guess it was a good thing that your wind hit his brother as well, and when we get back to camp, you should tell me and the rest of the group about that armor. Back with Tazuna, Sakura, and Sasuke, Naruto saw it tied up Maizu. Bam done that was one hell of a you unleashed back there, by the way where is the other one? He kind of died when I hit him full on. At the shocked looks of everyone there, especially Maizu, Naruto asked a question that was on his mind. So how did you beat him then? When you launched him he was pushed closer to me, and I just had to punch him once, and he was out cold. What are you telling me that while I was fighting for my life you just had to punch your guy once? And how the hell did you even punch him the armor he was wearing should have stopped that. Yeah that was all I had to do, and his armor didn't stop my fist. As Sasuke described what happened Naruto was getting more and more pissed off at his friend. Alright you guys, let's have a little talk with this demon brother here. The group closed in on Maizu to get the information they needed. Just as the group closed in on him he quickly swallowed a suicide pill, instantly killing himself before they could question him. Alright Tazuna starts explaining what all of this is actually about. These ninjas that just attacked us were aiming for you as if you were a target. As Tazuna began to explain to them about Gato and all of his corrupt doings in his village, the group of four decided to help the old man in restoring his village. Alright guys let's camp here for tonight and head out early in the morning. But that the group set up camp and had a fireless dinner. Naruto was the first to wake due to his half-demon status. Since the day he became a half-demon, he no longer needed to sleep for extended periods of time. He was currently sitting in a tree overlooking the landscape. Off in the distance he can see a half-completed bridge and a dead-looking town. Come here. Come and find me. You know you want my power. Hayubi what the hell was that? Um boy if you can hear me then you desire power. You cannot ignore me forever boy. That would be either a demonic weapon or something else entirely. What should I do? I mean I need to find out what it wants, and I need to know how I am able to hear it. You know what they say right Naruto asked Kakashi. They say that a man who stares at the sky has a lot on his mind. Well Kakashi sensei I know that this will sound crazy, but I keep hearing a voice inside my head that is not normally there. How do you know it isn't your little friend who is just messing with you after the look he received from Naruto he knew he was wrong. Alright when we get to Tazuna's house you can go looking for your friend. As Kakashi left to wake the rest of the group the voice came back and sounded even more excited. The group finally neared the bridge and had to take a boat across the river. The boat was not large enough for everyone to sit comfortably, so they had to sit in someone's lap. The boat driver motioned for Tazuna to come over to the side out of earshot. Tazuna, are you sure they can help us? They are just kids for Christ's sake. Listen Akadu they may be kids, but they are still ninja, and the blonde one over there is too damn stubborn to die. Now just get us across the river so I can finish the bridge. But that said the two walked back to the boat and began across the river in complete silence. As they reached the other side Naruto and Kakashi had a really bad feeling that something was wrong, as if they were being watched since they had crossed the river. Everyone be on alert, there is someone here and. Uck now shouted Naruto just in the nick of time as a very large blade flew past everyone's head and embedded itself in a tree. Standing on top of the sword was a man who was six feet tall with short black hair, no shirt with snow camo pants, and solid white wrist wraps on his arms and face. Well if it isn't Kakashi Haddock the copycat ninja. These little brats are yours ho oh, how the mighty have fallen. This coming from a man who failed to kill someone and was forced to flee from his own village, Zabuza Mamachi. The comment did not come from Kakashi or even Naruto, but from Sakura. Well it looks like these brats know who I am. I'm impressed. No Sakura knows of you because she has read and memorized the bingo book. I know of you because my brother is in the book in Naruto. Well, I don't know if he does nor do I really care. Oh, and who would your brother be, you emo twerp? My brother is Itachi Achiha, you eyebrow less moron. Anyone with a brain should have been able to see that I am an Achiha. Oh this one has some spunk in him, but what about your other two students? You three guard Tazuna, I will deal with Zabuza. I should be able to deal with him. No Kakashi sensei you will need some backup. Shouted Sasuke as he stood watched as Kakashi squared off against Zabuza. Listen you three, I want you to run away from here and take Tazuna home. Guard him till I get there and I will deal with Zabuza here. No Kakashi sensei I will help you that way if you overdo it, I can help you get out alive. I won't be much help in the fight itself. He is still way out of my league. I understand Naruto. Now let's make it. He was interrupted by a very thick mist creeping through the forest and obscuring everyone's vision. Even with all three Sharingan users with their eyes scanning through the fog without the slightest detection of movement. A prime choices to choose from. Liver, lungs, spine, clavicle vein, neck vein, brain, kidneys, heart, which one should I choose? Should I make it fast or slow and painful? 
as Abusa's disembodied voice sounded through the forest all of the Genin and Tazuna felt a very menacing cold chill race up their spins. Bakashi was rapidly searching for the source of the voice. He was not going to lose any of his students. As his eyes scanned the surrounding area he spotted a figure appear in between his students and Tazuna. It's over shouted Zabuza as he swung his sword in a wide arc towards Tazuna's body. As Tazuna watched in horror as the blade neared his body, it seemed that certain doom was inevitable. But just as the blade was inches from his head Zabuza turned into water. And there where the man once stood was Sasuke with his Sharingan eyes spinning wildly. I may be a genin, but I am still in a chair. Don't underestimate me with his Sharingan spinning even faster, he set his sights on finding the real Zabuza. So I have to deal with two Sharingan users. Well Kakashi is my only real threat. His little students can play with a few of my water clones. As Abusa reappeared he quickly rushed in attacking Kakashi directly. Just as he neared Kakashi three more appeared and rushed at the genin. Naruto and Sasu quickly rushed in and met their opponents head on. Sakura froze, seeing that there was still one more and that one was heading for her. The water clone sneered as he swung a devastating right hook and grinned even more as he heard a satisfying crack. Sakura knew her jaw was broken, and she was no match against Zabuza, even if it was only a clone. Sasuke and Naruto both knew that Sakura would not last long against the clone, and could possibly die. Naruto evading a wide swipe from his opponent he rushed in to help Sakura. Sakura get down now shouted Naruto as he ran through hand seals. Ran fireball. As the fireball raced towards the water clone Sakura attempted to knee the clone and push him in front of the fireball. Nice try, little girl, but you're not strong enough to hit me, you can't even hold your own against a clone. The grin graced her lips as she was slipping into unconsciousness and took her, I wasn't trying to hit you. As he looked up he saw the fireball a little too late as it slammed into his chest. The clone that Naruto was fighting walked over and smiled at Naruto. I'm impressed you took down one clone, but there are still two of us left not counting the original. Naruto was greeted with two fists hitting him in the face, courtesy of the remaining two clones. After the jaw-breaking hit, Naruto was immensely surprised that he was still conscious. He quickly activated his Sharingan eyes and noticed that he was the only one who was still up out of the three of them. He soon saw the last of the clones rushing in to finish the job and kill Tazuna. Need to use that dot I just hope I can make it in time before they kill Tazuna. At some point during all of the fighting, Kakashi had been captured by Zabuza inside of a water prison. Thinking fast, Naruto stood up and went through four hand seals. Tiger, dragon, horse, and rabbit, using those four hand seals he completed his dot. Higher style fire wipe dot. As he took out the last remaining water clones with a surprise attack, he chose to help Kakashi. Gathering wind chakra inside of his throat he let loose a mighty roar. Wind style atsugai dot a cone of condensed wind shot out of his mouth and headed straight for the real Zabuza. As Zabuza saw the heading towards him he knew he was in trouble. With how much chakra was pumped into the cone of wind it would kill him on contact. So he had two choices. Die by a genin or fight Kakashi again, and hope he was as lucky as the first time. As he moved to avoid that he was distracted by the blonde genin's eyes, they held the Sharingan and were analyzing every move he made. With this split second distraction he was too slow to fully avoid the dot. My leg, you little brat you destroyed my leg. As Naruto fell forward from chakra exhaustion, Kakashi caught him dripping wet from the water prison. You should know Zabuza to never underestimate any opponent even if they are just a genin. Kakashi moved to finish the job and end Zabuza's life, but just as he neared the downed man with his kunai drawn, appeared beside the body and took him away. Kakashi covered up his Sharingan eye so he could preserve the remaining amount of his chakra and turned to Tazuna. Let's get them to your house so we all can rest. Azuna only nodded his head and helped Kakashi carry the genin with the help of a few shadow clones. The next day Naruto awoke to a new surrounding and a very comfy bed. The smell of food wafted up through the floor from the kitchen somewhere downstairs. As he began to move there came a knock at the door, followed by a female's voice and figure stepping through the door. Oh. You're awake. Good breakfast is ready to come when you are ready to eat. But that the young women left the room and headed downstairs. I wonder where I am and where the rest of my team is. I hope we were not separated during the fighting with Zabuza. With many thoughts racing through his head he walked downstairs. As Naruto walked through the kitchen doorway he saw his whole team and Tazuna. His answers were answered as to where he was, and his team now all that was left to do was eat the copious amounts of food on the table. Alright everyone listen up. Zabuza is still alive and will probably be coming after everyone here once he is fully healed. The confusion around the table could be seen on everyone's face, especially Naruto's. But Kakashi sensei, there is no way he should have survived. The man couldn't even walk let alone fight off your attacks. You're right about that, but he had an accomplice that was hiding out and waiting to jump in and help if need be. So while we are here helping Tazuna finish the bridge everyone, and that includes you Naruto, will be training. But that everyone went back to eating their meal. 
As they were finishing up a young boy around 8 years old walked in and looked around the table. Mumbling something under his breath he turned and walked back up the stairs. Who was that asked Sakura. Oh that was my son Inari. What the hell is his problem asked Naruto through a mouth full of food. Naruto don't talk with your mouth full and don't be so rude. Well it's kind of rude for him to come down here and then leave without saying anything. He lost his father recently and has been very depressed as of late. The man who rules these lands is called Gato. He killed Inari's father and any others who were trying to overthrow him. All he does is bleed this country dry and forces the people into misery and poverty. That's so sad. After the explanation of Inari's past, Naruto stood up from the table and left without saying a word to anyone. Later that night with the team lying around resting and talking with Tezuna about the bridge and his country of waves. As they were all talking Naruto walked in the house sweating, covered in burn marks and slightly bleeding. Naruto what the hell happened to you asked Sasuke. I was training. I had to blow off some steam so I went out and rearranged the landscape a little. What do you mean by rearranging the landscape a little? Well Sakura I was working on a new one and it just so happened to go wrong, repeatedly wrong. But once I finally got a close it blew up and leveled several trees. Inner the team quickly forgot their conversation and headed to the kitchen to eat dinner. Sitting at the table was Inari looking down and gloomy as always. Everyone sat down at the table without a word and began to eat their dinner. So Tazuna, how is the bridge coming along asked Sakura. Well I hope that I can complete it with the village's help and the help of your team. Don't worry Tazuna, me and my team will help you and protect, you dot the smile that was radiating off of Naruto's face, gave everyone at the table hope, all but one. Why? Why do you guys try so hard? All that will happen is you die dot Inari, surprising everyone, broke the silence. Why do you think that everyone will die? Is it because of Gato? Gato killed my dad. He killed my dad and every man that was helping him. Don't you all see that no one can stop him? Oh shut up. Listen up you little shit at least you had a father. I never knew anyone from my family and my teammate here had his entire family killed by his own brother. You on the other hand still have your mother, your grandfather and many villagers that love and look out for you. I on the other hand I have no one, all I have is my team. The village I come from and live in, the very village I would give my life for hates me. As his temper continued to rise red, blue and black chakra began to seep out and saturate the atmosphere in the room. My own village has attempted to kill me. By the time I was 5 years old I had over 26 assassination attempts on my life. I have been burned, stabbed, tortured and one person even attempted to hang me. After his last statement he pulled off his shirt and showed everyone the jagged and rough scars that littered his body. Chest, rib cage and back were covered with nothing but scars and hardly any unscathed skin. Along the outline of the scars were signs of severe burn marks. This is what it means to be hated by the ones you love. To this day I have had over 300 assassination attempts on my life, and the only reason why I am still alive to this day, is that the leader of my village looks out for me. With his temper fully peaked, he slammed his hands on the table splintering it. So if you want to whine and cry about how difficult your life is just because you lost someone, well you are winning against the wrong person. As Naruto stormed out of the room everyone settled into a deep quietness. The thickness in the air was gone, but no one could remove those horrible scars and burns that had littered the body of the most cheerful young boy they knew. Bakashi sensei, how much of that was true. Bakashi looked directly at Sasuke and Sakura, and then he turned to the rest of the people before saying a word. Every word he said was true. Those scars are a constant reminder to him and a few others the horrors he has endured, and at such a young age. How? How did he retain his humanity? Every single person I know of would have killed themselves or gone insane. That's just it though Naruto did try to kill himself once, and the only reason why he is still alive is because of me. I was still on Anbu at the time, but I saw him walking home, and he was covered in burn marks. Once he entered his house he attempted suicide. He strung a rope up and tried to hang himself, I rushed in and cut the rope. After I rushed him to the hospital he was institutionalized for a while, and the ones who did it were killed. That young man is stronger than any I have met in my life. Dad, I am surprised that you are complimenting something. After they were all told a little about Naruto's past, everyone had a little more respect for the young man. Inari was the one hit the hardest with it and quickly rushed to his room. Everyone let's get some sleep. The group of ninja walked upstairs to their respected rooms and quickly fell asleep. 